I think it is the general assumption that you all have said that our systems uh, can be invaded that has the American people, we as policymakers, concerned, but the average American concerned that there is no privacy anymore. Uh, General, do you think in the report next week that you all will ascribe a motivation to Putin for uh, the election attempt? Yes, we will ascribe a, a, a motivation. I'd rather not, uh, again, preempt the report. Understood. Well, then will you discuss after the report what is sufficient in the future to impose enough cost to make them stop this kind of activity? No, we won't. We, if we're going to speak to that, that would be separate from the report. Uh, wh what the report will include, uh, per the president's tasking, was um, a section contributed by the Department of Homeland Security and NIST, I believe, on um, best practices for defending. Uh, but it does not uh, speak to that which is really uh, out of our lane. Uh, that's, a, that's a policy call. So we're now talking about deterrence. And as one of you said in your testimony, it's not like the nuclear standoff of mutually assured destruction because we don't have a particular deterrence now. Would you discuss that? That what I was uh, point I was trying to make is that in the case of uh, nuclear deterrence there are uh, instruments. You can see, feel, touch, measure uh, weaponry. We've had a demonstration a long time ago of the impact of nuclear uh, weaponry. And that is what creates both the physical substance of deterrence as well as the psychology. And the problem with the cyber domain, it's not it is not uh, doesn't have those physical dimensions that you can measure, see, feel, and touch as we do with uh, nuclear uh, nuclear deterrence. So let me give you an example. Um, help us understand: Had the uh, supposed invasion into the Vermont utility been, in fact, an invasion by a foreign power. Uh, and ascribed to that was shutting it down, if that had been the case. What would be some of the options that we would do? Well, the again, this would be uh, it, as I understand it, by the way, is it, it was not, but had it been uh, for, from, say, malware planted by a foreign power, uh, I think that's something would be a very situational dependent as to what to do about it. As I indicated in my remarks, uh, perhaps a, a cyber per, uh, reaction to a cyber act it may not be the best course of action. Uh, some other form of national power, sanctions, is what we have tr uh, traditionally used. And as I also indicated, the problem, uh, at least for me, is, and I'll ask others to speak if they want to, is not knowing, if you do retaliate in a cyber context, not knowing exactly what counter-retaliation you'll get back. Now, we go through all kinds of exquisite uh, thought processes on, on deciding how to react. We're, we try to be very sur surgical, very precise, we try to gauge what the second order or unintended consequences might be. I don't think others are similarly disposed to consider uh, such precision and, and, and uh, such uh, exactness uh, when they respond. So there's always that issue of counter-retaliation, ergo, my, 
recommend my brief mention that it's, in my view, best to consider all instruments of, of national power. And I think I, that's I, what's uh, concerning us. Uh, could we, uh, the United States, do we have the ability that we could make it so tough on North Korea with a cyber attack that it would deter them from some of their strange behavior? Not necessarily via, via a direct cyber reaction, given the difficulty of gaining access to their cyber networks. Thank you. Uh, Director Clapper, um, you, you're pretty far along on the report that will be released next week, obviously. How, how far along are you, and, and what do you lack, and, and, um, and how will this be released? Will it be in a, in a classified format? Will you, uh, will you have a, be willing to testify in an open hearing like this, or we, will we need to go down to the SCIF to hear this? What's, uh, what's planned is uh, uh, a series of briefings uh, in, in the Congress. I think I have four more hearings to do. First with our oversight committees, which will be closed hearings, I believe, and then there'll be and when will that be all next? House, all Senate uh, uh, hearings, I believe, next week, as we roll out a version of the uh, report early. And so that early those week will to be, be classified followed by a unclassified version. I see. So the 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 public will will not hear sources and methods. Uh, but they'll, you, you think it'll be fairly convincing without going beyond what... I assure you that we, we intend, I intend to be, to push the envelope as much as I can on, uh, particularly on the unclassified version, because uh, uh, I think the public should know as much about this as possible. This is why I felt very strongly about the statement we made in uh, October. And so uh, we'll be as uh, forthcoming as we can, but there are some sensitive and fragile sources and methods here, uh, which is one reason why we're reticent to talk about in this setting. Right, and, and you've said that, and I, I expect you'll be challenged uh, with uh, some very talented questioners up and down the, the, uh, the dais here, here today on that. And I, I would have to support uh, what Senator Nelson has said, in, as, as regrettable and reprehensible as the hacking of political parties uh, is, I, I do think Senator Nelson has, um, has, has touched on uh, really a, a, the larger issue, which really is the subject matter of this hearing, and that's what the, what the real threats are. And um, it, it concerns me that... Um, that that we really don't know what the deterrence ought to be, and I wonder at, at what at what level are conversations taking place um, within the administration or within the intelligence community about what is appropriate in terms of a response. You mentioned cyber countering cyber with cyber uh, is not necessarily. Uh, the, the number one solution. Um, Secretary Latre mentioned um, that, imp that we should impose costs, and perhaps after you answer, I can ask him to expound on that also. Well, we have had uh, um, many discussions uh, in, uh, in the White House Situation Room at uh, Deputies Committee, Principals Committee, and, and NSC meetings. Uh, about um, what to do uh, when we have these attacks. I think this, the, the Sony uh, attack by the North Koreans is a, is a case in point. And there you get into the complexities of if you launch a counter a cyber a counter cyber attack, and you're um, I have to be careful here, but you have to use some other nation's infrastructure in order to uh, mount that attack. And well, that gets into, uh, as I've learned, com the compl complex legal issues involving international law. And so the judgment was to impose uh, some other costs other than a direct cyber retaliation. 
Did you recommend the the um, president's sanctions? It was uh, were his actions in response to uh, the Russian hacking uh, part of your recommendation, or did that come from someone else? Well, that was well. Without going into uh, internal decision making, uh, I think that was uh, you know it was a consensus interagency view. Secretary Latre. What about what about um, imposing cost? What did what did you mean by that? Well, as part of an approach that uh, to deterrence that takes each case as it comes up, case by case, we need to look at ways to respond uh, first, deter, and then respond to attacks at at a time and a place of our choosing that favors advantages that we have as we use all of the instruments available. So we look to deny objectives and then impose costs, as you, as you indicated, Senator. Imposing costs really can come um, from, from things like were announced last week with the sanctions uh, that were applied in the case of the Russian hacking situation. Uh, but they can go more broadly than that. From the military's perspective, we're concerned not just about Russia's cyber hacking, but also about a range of aggressive actions by Russia across multiple regions of the globe. And so we look to impose costs on Russia by uh, a range of measures uh, across multiple regions in partnership with our allies through NATO uh, where we can uh, to push back on Russian actions uh, and deter future aggressive actions. So that's a bit of what we mean by imposing costs here. Thank you. It seems that every attack is handled on a case-by-case -case basis, and that, that's not a, not a strategy. 